Hi, I'm Phil from Simply Rhino and in this quick video I'm going to be taking a look at another new feature in Rhino 7, Quad Remesh. If you're looking for a more in-depth examination of Quad Remesh then check out this more substantial video at rhino3d.co.uk. Quad Remesh is great for reverse engineering and mesh retopology and this command sits inside both the mesh tools and the sub D tools and, as we'll see shortly, it has a fairly close relationship with sub D. Here I have a single NURB surface which has a little bit of curvature detailing here and a sharp crease here. And ordinarily if I mesh this using the standard mesh tool in Rhino I'm going to end up with a fairly dense mesh like this and that mesh is a mixture of quad meshes and tri meshes. Quad remesh, however, gives us a new way of meshing. I'm going to run the tool and pick the surface that I want to mesh, and I can then calculate the result either based on the target edge length or the number of quads that I want to use. So I'll start with target edge length and I'll preview and hide the input object so we can better see the quad remesh result. Now you see we have a number of settings here and I'll first turn on detect hard edges and this will keep the crease in here. When we use target edge length all our quads are going to be pretty much the same size whereas if we switch to target quad count there is an amount of adaption in this which lets us have smaller quads where there is more curvature or detail in the surface and I can increase the amount of adaption by using the percentage slider here. And now you'll see that I have bigger faces here where I have less detail and smaller faces here where I have more detail. I'll set that back to 50 and I'll turn on adaptive quad count. What this setting will do is to throw more quads at the areas of more detail and this will usually give us a higher quad count than we specify. As well as creating a mesh I can create a sub D. Now this sub D is of course smooth by nature but I can make this crease aware and I can create corner conditions on the sub D and I can also choose to interpolate the sub D rather than by creating it by its vertex points. And this will make the quad remesh sub D fit closer to our target surface. One of the things I can do is to change the topology locally by using some curves. So I'm going to turn on these curves here and I'm going to pick select curves in the dialog and choose these three curves and enter. Then I'm going to change the curve influence to edge ring and I'm also going to invoke a symmetry along the x-axis here and you'll see that now my topology is equalized about the x-axis and we've created an area of topology with this circular detail to it. So I'll accept that result and I'll just push that sub D onto another layer here. So what I want to do now is to turn on the gumball and pick this middle circular edge and just pull this upwards a little bit. Now if we look at this with a reflective view mode you'll see how this topology change allows for an easy shape change. One of the areas where quad remesh can be very useful is in reverse engineering. Here we have a fairly typical laser scan and this one is from a Polyga scanner and this is producing a mesh with four and a half million faces. This is quite a dense mesh and certainly not something we'd want to work with directly. So let's have a look at trying to make some sense of this with quad remesh. I'm going to start with the settings at somewhere close to default. So a quad count of 2000, adaptive size of 50% and adaptive quad count turned on. I'll also convert to a sub D by interpolation, keeping sub D creases on. I'll preview the result of this. And now you can see that the result is pretty good without too much effort. The topology of the mesh works out and traces the shape very well and indeed the mesh is created based on principal curvature so you can be confident that much of the time the topology is going to be empathetic with the shape. 
There's a bit of a problematic area here, but it's certainly much better than we had to start with, so I'll accept the result. You can see that we have some holes where the original scan data was open, but this is now something that's going to be much easier to fix going forward. And we can probably keep this as a sub D and simplify some of the areas before converting to a NURBS polysurface and redoing some of the circular hole and threaded features. Another area where quad remesh could be very useful is in retopologizing terrain. Here we have quite a dense terrain mesh which is rather unwieldy and we can produce a nice smooth quad remesh result and perhaps turn this into a sub D so that, for example, we could do some local landscaping. So, that's about the end of what I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments below. If you found this video useful, then please hit the like button and remember that to keep up with the latest developments in Rhino, then you can subscribe to this channel. At Simply Rhino, we offer training for Rhino and all its key plugins, so check out our website for more details. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.